हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक टू क्लैरी कंसेप्ट्स अनलिशिंग कंसेप्चुअल लर्निंग्स फॉर मोर वीडियोस ऑन कंसेप्चुअल क्लैरिटी लॉग इन टू और वेबसाइट क्लैरी कंसेप्ट्स डॉट कॉम टुडे बिफोर आई मूव ऑन विद द लेक्चर आई वुड लाइक टू आस्क यू एंड शो यू सम ऑफ द पिक्चर्स ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग मार्वल्स यू सी यू माइट हैव सीन सच काइंड ऑफ डैम्स बिल्ड अक्रॉस द रिवर्स दिस डैम बेसिकली आर बिल्ड अक्रॉस द रिवर्स टू कंजर्व द वाटर सो दैट द रिजर्व वायर कैन बी क्रिएटेड ऑन वन ऑफ द साइड right and this water can be used whenever uh, required uh, for education or other purposes now you see this wall when it was designed on one side of the wall there is a completely 200 to 300 meters of water being filled on other side of the wall there is an air medium now when the wall have been designed at that time but obvious that the force because of water will be applied on the wall so have you ever thought how do engineers estimate this force on the wall on one of the side due to water so this is hydrostatic force right think about it let me show another example you might have seen this kind of submarines are uh, the you know uh, in a uh, design for uh, uh, for the, for the operations under the water if you look at the submarine shape the surface of the submarine is exposed to the water pressure have you ever thought that how do the designers how do engineers calculate what amount of force the submarine has to handle so that you know a hydrostatic force submarine has to, the external surface of the submarine has to handle because when they design submarine they design it for a particular depth so if they go beyond that depth the submarine will start malfunctioning right have you ever thought this is another example you see uh, there is a underwater rail tunnel uh, uh, on a hugli river you see uh this kind of tunnel was created and through which the rail can uh, the train can uh, pass by right and this was at the depth of 30 meter from a free water surface now if you look at this the tunnel was of around 5 20 meters long and uh, on one side there is a water on uh, one side there is an air now how do design engineers estimate that exactly what amount of water force has to be handled or withstood by this kind of structure see you might have seen this kind of advertisement that uh, there are many hotels under water under water hotels right so they say that they wake up with the sharks and have breakfast with them so if for the under water hotels you see the walls of these hotels on one side there is water on another side you are sitting and you are enjoying your uh, breakfast and all so if you see on one side there is air on one side there is water now how do this civil engineers or design engineers make out that what kind of force this walls have to bear the water forces and all the answers that i have talked about will be provided for all this structure by a concept called hydrostatic force so let us talk today about hydrostatic forces on the submerged surfaces so there are two types of submerged surfaces one of them are called plane surfaces which are flat in nature and another are called curved surfaces so whatever examples we saw there were mixture of those there are some of them were curved surfaces some of them were flat surfaces so we will start our discussion with this what is the how to calculate the hydrostatic force for a submerged plane surfaces so let us start our discussion so let's say for example i have this uh, tank and this is a tank has six walls flat walls plane surfaces right and there is a water filled up to certain certain height now when i say that if i want to measure what is the force that the water is applying on this bottom on this bottom wall on this bottom wall how do you make out you know that the pressure applied by the water on this wall is let's say p and you calculate pressure based on you know atmospheric pressure plus rho g h so you know that pressure at each of the points on the wall is equal and if you multiply this pressure with area you will get the force isn't it so you will see pressure the force applied on this bottom wall is equals to pressure into area because pressure is same at all the points now when i ask you that tell me what is the total force applied by the water on this this vertical wall now you see the vertical wall basically this vertical wall that you see over here is no more having the same pressure at all the points because as you move down you can see the pressure is constantly increasing pressure at the at the upper layer will be smaller and then as you move down pressure will keep on increasing now if you want to multiply let's say if you want to calculate the force hydrostatic force because hydrostatic force will always act normal to the surface now if you want to calculate force by default you will say it is pressure into area question is which pressure will you consider in this case because at each of this vertical point pressure is different so let us take into the account 
and will uh, derive an equation that which kind of pressure can be considered for this particular case. So let's say for example, I have the liquid, I have the fluid pool and in this fluid, I have a, the free surface of fluid is somewhere over here and I have an inclined plate which is inclined at an angle of let's say theta degrees from the free surface of the fluid and now when I look this plate, see this, you, you look from the side view, you see the thickness of the plate. But when you look it from the top, you will see plate something like this. So, I will just uh, draw an irregular shaped body. Now, let us suppose that the axis from this origin O, Y axis is along the length of the plate and then Z axis is along the uh, perpendicular to this length, right. And if you look at this way, this is the X axis, frontal. Now, if I would like to know that what is the fluid pressure, what is the hydrostatic force that is applied by the fluid on this upper surface of the plate. That means I need to know first of all what is the pressure distribution at each of the point. So as you see, as you move down the pressure is increasing. Why? Because the depth of water is keep on increasing or of the fluid is increasing, right. Now if I want to know, let us assume that there is a small elemental area whose area is let us say dA and if you project it on the from the top you will see that the area is smaller and let us say that the, the distance from the axis is y meters and uh, say that the area is small dA. Now the pressure over here is let us say P. So this P pressure is applied on the area dA and there is a small elemental force that is applied on this area which is let us say dF. So I will say that the elemental force dF is equals to pressure into area dA. Question is what is pressure? Pressure over here will be, let us say if I draw the triangle, let us say this is triangle, I will just draw it with a black color. This triangle, right, O, let us say this is A and this is B. So let us suppose this distance is Y, right, this distance is OA is Y. So this AB, let us say it is H, some distance H. So can I say H is equals to? H is equals to, this OB is Y cos theta, H is equals to Y sin theta. So, let us suppose that the pressure over here is atmospheric, PO, let us say pressure over here is atmospheric PO. So, using hydrostatic law, pressure at this particular point will be PO plus rho GH, isn't it? Using the hydrostatic law, yes. And now what I will do? Now, I will keep this DA as it is. So, this is the total value of force, small elemental force dF that is applied on this element. Now, your object, your target is to find out the forces in the entire area. So, now what you will do? You will try and find out the forces on all this small, small element and try to make our, make, make our entire area and then take the summation of all these forces, small, small forces. And this basically is the thing but the integration. So, if you want the resultant force, resultant force is the integration over area for a small elemental force dF. Now, I put these values over here. See, there will be some mathematics involved in this particular lecture, but I request you to stay till the end because at the end of this lecture, you will get a very significant uh, formula which reflects that what exact pressure to be, to be used to find out the hydrostatic force on any inclined surface. So, now dF, you will put the value that is P0 plus rho GH dA. You can dissolve this integral into two parts. So, first part will be integral A PO dA and second part will be integral A rho G and H could be written as Y sin theta, Y sin theta dA, right. Now, you can take all the variables which is not varying with respect to area outside the integral. So, atmospheric pressure will not vary with respect to area. So, PO is coming out integral A dA plus rho is not varying with the area g is not varying with the area, angle theta is not varying with the area, but yes, y is changing with the area, different, different area, y will be different. So, you can, you, will, you cannot take out y from the integral. So, this is y dA area integral. Now, see, what is this? Integral of dA is, if you add all this small, 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 small areas, you will end up with the total area capital A, right? So, integral area, area integral of dA will be capital A, where capital A is the total area of this plane surface. So, if this is a plate, the total area of the plate on which you want to find out the force. Now, this rho g sin theta is as it is. What is this? 
integral y dA. Can anybody tell me? See, I, I am sure that in your elementary physics, you have learned that if I want to find out the centroid of this area, the centroid of this area, it is said that yc is the centroid of the area, which is equal to integral y dA, area integral of y dA over integral of area. So, this is basically yc equals to area integral of y dA. What is just integral of dA will be just capital A, total area of this plate. And this implies, I can say, yc into A, yc into A will be equals to, yc into A will be equals to, will be equals to, in area integral of y times dA. So, can you replace this area integral of y times dA with yc into a, where yc is the y coordinate of the centroid point. Now, centroid means what? So, let me locate centroid point somewhere over here. C is the centroid point and the y coordinate of centroid point means the distance of from the axis to this point C. So, this is yc. So, if I remove this. So, this is your yc, isn't it? This distance. So, yc into this capital A, this entire area is capital A. So, I can replace this by yc into capital A. Now, let me again resolve this a bit. I will put p0 into A plus rho g. What is yc sin theta? yc is this distance. That means from here to here. Let me again draw another triangle. That is a triangle O. Uh, let me take another variable because C is used already used once. So, I will put O, E and F. So, in triangle O, E, F, this O, E is the Y, C, you can check, right? And this is theta. So, can you, let us say this is the vertical distance of centroid point. Centroid is somewhere over here. Centroid is somewhere over here, right? So, vertical distance of centroid point is, let us say, H, C. So, can I say... HC is equals to YC sin theta. So, YC cos theta is this distance. OF. Can you say HC as YC sin theta? Because OF is YC cos theta. This is YC sin theta. So, HC can be considered as YC sin theta. Yes. So, you can replace this term YC sin theta as just HC. Now, what is this? You can see. If you can take area common p0 plus rho g h c into area. This is what fr. So, I have not yet ended fr is equals to p0 plus rho g h c into area a. Now, what is p0 plus rho g h c? You can h c is what? h c is this distance. If I draw over here, this distance is your HC. That means what? P0 is pressure at this particular point. P0 plus rho G HC will be a pressure at this point, isn't it? Pressure at center point will be, let's say, PC. So, this value is nothing but pressure at the centroid point. And A is the total area of this. Total plane area is capital A. So, what did you got? You got force on the submerged plane surface is nothing but the product of pressure into area, but pressure has to be at a centroid point. So, what we were discussing is, we were discussing that in this particular case, let us say, uh, uh, FR that we have found is pressure at the centroid point into area, where PC is pressure at the centroid point, but the force is applied. The force is concentrated at a point which is called CP. CP is the center of pressure. Right? So, center of pressure is located at a distance of Yp from the origin, let us say. So, in next class, we are also going to look at, see, we already got the magnitude of this force, Fr, which is Pc into A, where Pc is this pressure at the centroid point. But we have not yet understood at what particular location this force is concentrated, this force is applied. So, in general, the, the center of the hydrostatic force is called Cp, which is the center of pressure. And we are going to look in the next class that what is the location of this pressure using the Yp, center of pressure. Okay. So, now let us come back to the previous question. Now, if somebody asks me that what pressure I should take to find out the resultant force Fr on this surface, 
so i now can say that fr should be equals to pressure at center into area area is available with me i know that what is the area of this particular wall let's say this is your length l this should be your width w for example and now what is the location of centroid first locate the centroid point centroid point will always be located at the halfway at the halfway so you can connect this line somewhere over here so this is your centroid point c now find out the pressure at this point pc pc will be what p0 plus rho g l by 2 once you got pc you can use it over here multiply by this area you will get the resultant force acting on the submerged plane surface got it so we'll continue the discussion in the next class where we are going to look look about the location of this force where we are going to look about the center of pressure thank you so much see you in the next class